All right, there's a question here that relates to what I've been doing personally, which is not always the best <laughs> advice to follow, but I will tell you. Um, and you know, as Keith and I have talked about, my mentality or DNA is a little different. I'm not a great trader, so I'd like to take the emotion out of it. So in my 401k, uh, actually early March, I basically went to, I think they call it, we don't have a lot of choices in our 401k, but they call it pre preservation of capital, which is basically money markets. And I went to a bond fund, so kind of missed the downturn. But, and I hate to admit it, yesterday I bought some <laughs> equities in my 401k because I had the FOMO. I didn't buy a lot, and that, that's what I've trained myself out of, but I'm like, Jesus, I'm gonna miss this. And you know, this is typical for me as a trader. I wait till the worst moment of FOMO and I get in. <laughs> what I have learned though is I do it on a very small scale now. So 401k had the benefit of missing the drawdown. Probably gonna take a loss today, but it didn't go in big, so I'm happy about that. My trading account, and we can only really do uh, ETFs for a trading account. I basically just went to cash because for me the volatility was too much. Uh, but for me, the biggest thing was trying to take care of my largest investment, like you, which is hedge eye. So, you know, that's what my my advice would be: like, take care of what really drives your net worth, right? Yeah. yeah to yeah. preserve that capital. So, you know, the benefit of all this is, you know, like you, my net worth has been going up. Hedge eye has been doing well. I've been largely in cash, but I'm fine with that. So. Yeah. Now, the net worth discussion might be worth <laughs> reviewing here too. I know some of you have. I've gone through this with some of you, but since like quite literally our, our subscriber base has doubled, um, m maybe a lot of you haven't seen this, but I mean, it's a pretty simple way to think about your net, uh, net worth, okay? So this is time. You start at time zero. When I was a dirty little mucker in college, that's with an M, I had negative net worth, zero. I'm a son, I, you know, I didn't have zero integrity, you know, quality of life, credibility. My dad was a firefighter and my mom uh, was a teacher. So, you know, like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't rolling in it. Right? I, went, I had student debt, I had to pay for my own college, the part of it um, you know, where, I, where I didn't have financial aid. And so I, I came out of college like this. Like, I mean, I, I, quite literally, this is like a thousand bucks. Okay? A thousand. One thousand, living paycheck to paycheck, like a lot of you did. Right? Some people, like Ackman, he just born on third base and thought he was supposed to be there. Well, actually, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give everybody a quick personal anecdote here. Because Keith and I w went to college together. One thousand dollars. <laughs> And there was, a, there was a day in college, we were at this place called Toads in New Haven. We looked at each other, neither of us even had $100, let alone 1000 <laughs> But we needed a few more beers, so Keith took off his watch, gave it to the bartender. We had a couple more beers each and went home. <laughs> Since then, our net worth has been going the right direction. Yes, that so was, uh, that was the bottom of the net worth. Yeah, that yeah. was the, the low, Jonesy. Yeah. Uh, and what kind of beer was it? Probably net. Oh no, actually we got we usually we, got, got, we, we usually go on the uh, nat, on the, on the cheap lights. stuff. You know, Natty Lights. We went to the Sam Adams. Yeah. So we I was that was a big moment for me. Anyway, back to the back to the reality of it all. And this is a true story. Obviously, I, like a lot of you, I start with nothing. So when I made something, it meant something to me, right? I'm not willing to listen to some jackass on TV tell me to buy stocks, right? There are plenty of times where I have, plenty of times where I have. I already mentioned all the years that I have. This is what your net worth line should look like. Okay, so then you start, you know, you move into the third and fifth year, you start making a little scratch, and you got a little bit more hook to that, right? Then you, you don't, all of a sudden, what happens? I'm right around here in 07, right? At my all time highs. Start getting bearish, got fired for it, actually. From that period where people went like that, at least that, that's being conservative. I started hedge eye, I shorted stocks, and I kept going this way. Hey, what's, 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 what's with the color? CNBC inter, interject. So I was going like this. I wasn't going up huge. Like, again, I'm a much better short seller today than I was during that, cra during that crash. I made a lot more money during this crash than I did then, because I have more money to make money on. Right? Got that? 20 times in a row, shorting the Russell and tech with my own money. I don't have to tell you how much I was shorting at a time, but it's not a small amount of money, okay? So again, this is what happens. This is what the thing should look. And then what happens? In 2011, boom, straight down. Many, many times. What you want to do is have a relatively low volatility in your net wealth like this. You don't want to have shit like this happening. The worst crash, again, if you go to where we are today, you know, we've had a couple, but, but this one, the worst crash since 1987, and then be some jackass in, the, in Twitter, not, certainly wouldn't happen in our queue, like, how did you miss this move? This move! 
We're up here, you're down here, right? That's the difference. There's a big difference. And I know which side you'd like to be on. And if you can't do it for yourself, teach your kids, all right? Do it for them.